This is Mrs. Appiah with Lesson 15 from Module 2, Multiplication and Division of Rational Numbers. The student outcomes for this lesson. Students recognize that the rules for multiplying and dividing integers apply to rational numbers. Students interpret products and quotients of rational numbers by describing real-world contexts. Our essential question, what are some key words that indicate multiplication or division in a word problem? In exercise one, in the space below, create a word problem that involves integer multiplication. Write an equation to model the situation. Since we want to use integers, we'll use positive and negative numbers. For our problem, let's say that you buy three cookies for $2 each. How does the purchase affect the amount of money in your wallet? When you make a purchase, the amount of money in your wallet is going to decrease. So we know that when you purchase something, it will be a negative number. We're buying three cookies, so we'll be taking out of money out of our wallet three times $2 each. So our equation will be three times negative two. And that will be uh, $2, $2, and $2 is a total of $6. So it will decrease the amount of money in our wallet by $6. Now change the word problem by replacing the integers with non-integer rational numbers, like fractions or decimals, and write the new equation. Let's change the cost of the cookies from $2 to $1.50, and we'll still buy three of them. So we have three cookies times $1.50 each, and that's going to decrease the amount of money in our wallet, so that's going to be a negative $1.50. And the total is $1.50, $1.50, and $1.50 for a total of $4.50 that will be taken out of our wallet. So that will be a negative $4.50. Was the process used to solve the second problem different from the process used to solve the first problem? The process is the same. In both equations, it was a positive number, 3, multiplied by a negative number, the money. So the product is negative. The process, multiplication, is represented as repeated addition as in $1.50 plus $1.50 plus $1.50 equals $4.50. So the process was the same. The rules for multiplying rational numbers are the same as the rules for multiplying integers. You multiply the absolute values of the two rational numbers. Then you determine the sign. If the two factors have the same sign, their product is positive such as a positive and a positive equals a positive, a negative times a negative equals a positive. If the two factors have opposite signs, their product is negative, such as a positive times a negative is a negative. Exercise 2. In one year, Melinda's parents spend $2,640.90 on cable and internet service. They spend the same amount each month. What is the resulting monthly change in the family's income? So we know that this time period is one year. We know the total that they spent, and they spend the same amount each month. And we want to know what the cost is for one month, how it's going to change their income. Since they're spending money, it will be a decrease. So that will be a negative number. We also know that they want to spend the same amount each month, and they're taking the whole bill for the year and splitting it evenly, and that indicates division. So we'll take our total bill of $2,640.90, and we are going to divide it evenly among the 12 months. 12 goes into 26 two times. That's 24. Subtract bring down the 4. 12 goes into 24 two times, evenly. 
bring down the 0. 12 goes into 0, 0 times. Bring down the 9. 12 goes into 9, 0 times. Bring down the 0. 12 goes into 90, 7 times. 7 times 12 is 84. Subtract. Bring down a 0. And let's take a look at what we have. Our decimal is right here. And we've got $220.07. And we um, could keep going here, but we have dimes when it comes to money, and we have pennies when it comes to money. And we don't have anything smaller than that. So we want to um, take a look at should we stop here or divide one more time. And we can divide one more time just to see if we should round that penny up or down. So 12 goes into 60 five times evenly. And so technically, that, if we wanted to round that, it would be $220.08. And that is the resulting monthly change in the family's income. Now, is that adding to their income or decreasing their income? When you're spending money, it's decreasing. So we would say that that's $220.08, and it is negative. So that would be our final answer. In this problem, we had a positive divisor of 12, and the money is money being spent, and that's a negative number. So we had negative $26,040.90 divided by a positive number 12, and the answer is a negative $220 and rounded to the nearest penny, 8 cents. So we notice that a negative divided by a positive is a negative. When you have opposite signs, the quotient is negative. The rules for dividing rational numbers are the same as the rule for dividing integers. And remember that rational numbers are fractions and decimals, and the integers are the whole positive and negative numbers without the fraction parts. So the rules divide the absolute values of the two rational numbers. Then, if the two numbers, the dividend and the divisor, have the same sign, their quotient is positive. If the two numbers dividend and divisor have opposite signs, their quotient is negative. So those are the same rules that you learned for the integers, and that applies to the rational numbers as well. Exercise 3. Use the fundraiser chart to help answer the questions that follow. So let's first just take a look at the chart and see what it's about. Grimes Middle School Flower Fundraiser. So we are selling different types of plants, tulips, daisies, geraniums, violets, and daisies. And we have some different customers, Tamara, Mrs. Wolf, Mr. Clark, Jeremy, Nana, and Papa. And they're buying plants, and the plants cost a different amount per plant. Some of the totals here are listed. For example, uh, Mrs. Wolf bought a daisy. She bought one plant. It's $3.75, and that's her total, and she has already paid. Nana and Pop bought four daisies for $3.75 each, and their total is $15, and they have not paid yet. Jeremy is selling plants for the school fundraiser. Listed above is a chart from his fundraising order form. Use the information in the chart to answer the following questions. Show your work and represent the answer as a rational number. Then explain your answer in the context of the situation. If Tamara Jones writes a check to pay, pay for her plants, what is the resulting change in her checking account balance? So she is paying for two plants at $4.25 each. The $4.25 is going to be deducted from her checking account twice. So we have two plants 
times negative four dollars and twenty five cents and that will be a total of a negative eight dollars and fifty cents. Mr. Clark wants to pay for his order with the twenty dollar bill. Jeremy does not have change. Jeremy tells Mr. Clark he will give him the change later. How will this affect the total amount of money Jerry collects? Explain. What rational number represents the change that must be made to the money that Jeremy collects? So let's figure out how much money Mr. Clark needs to pay. Taking a look at his order, he is ordering five geraniums for $5.25. So let's figure out how much money that is. Five geraniums times $2.25. And that money is um, money that is being spent, so it is a negative number. But we are looking at it from Jeremy's point of view. So uh, it will be money that he is collecting. So we'll be thinking of it as a positive number that Jeremy is collecting. That gives us a total of $11.25. And we're looking at this from Jerry's, Jeremy's point of view. So he is collecting that money. Now it says that Jeremy tells Mr. Clark he will give him the change later. So how much change should he be getting? $20, take away $11.25 that he pays for the plants, and that results in $8.75 change. So Jeremy collects too much money. He owes Mr. Clark $8.75. Since Jeremy owes $8.75, that is considered a negative number. Negative $8.75 is the adjustment that Jeremy will need to make because he owes that. So one of the key words that you can be thinking about for positives and negatives is when you earn money, it's a positive number. If you owe money, it's a negative number. Jeremy's sister, Susie, borrowed the money from her mom to pay for her order. The mother has agreed to deduct an equal amount of money from Susie's allowance each week for the next five weeks to repay the loan. What is the weekly change in Susie's allowance? So, first, Jeremy's grandparents want to change their order. They want to change their three daisies and one geranium. So we want to figure out how much money they were initially going to spend, then calculate the cost of their new order, and then see what the difference is. They may need to pay more or they may be spending less. So their first order was $3.75 times four plants. $3.75 times four plants. And that is a total of $15. Then their new order was $3.75 times three plants. And in addition to that, they ordered one plant that cost $2.25. And that is a total of, let's see, $11.25 for the daisies plus 2.25 for the geranium. And that's a total of $13 and 50 cents. So they were originally going to spend $15, but they changed their order and now they're only spending $13 and 50 cents. So how does the change affect the amount in their order? It's going to decrease the cost of their order. They paid $15 and they are only getting $13.50 worth of merchandise. So we need to see how much the refund should be. And that will be the difference between the two amounts, which is $1.50. 
Jeremy approaches three people who do not want to buy any plants. However, they wish to donate some money for the fundraiser when Jeremy delivers the plants one week later. If the people promise to donate a total of $14.40, what will the average cash donation be? So they're giving a donation, so that's going to be a positive number. And it's a total of $14.40, and we want the average. The average means that you want it to split it evenly. So that is a key word for division. So we want to take our $14.40 and split it evenly among the people who are donating. And there were three people that were going to donate. So we'll divide by three, and our answer is $4.80. That is the average donation of the three people. Jeremy spends one week collecting orders. If 22 people purchase plants totaling $270, what is the average amount of Jerry's sale? So the average means that you want to split it evenly. We're splitting the $270 among the 22 people. So we have $270 divided by 22 people. We'll go ahead and do that division. That's 1, 2, 44, 6. Add your decimal. So we've got $12 each so far. Add a 0, and that's 244. 16, 0, divide again, that's 70, 7 times 2, 154, and that gives us 6, 2, 44. So when we're dealing with money, remember that our money stops at pennies. So this will either be $12.27 or round it up to $12.28. Since this 2 is less than 5, we just drop In this lesson, you have learned the rules for applying, multiplying, and dividing integers apply to rational numbers. We can use the products and quotients of rational numbers to describe real-world situations. Keywords that mean multiplication are product. Keywords that mean division, quotient, average, split equally. Keywords that mean positive, earn, deposit, rise. Keywords that mean negative, borrow, loan, fall, owe, spend, buy, and withdraw. Add to this list and memorize what words mean multiplication and which words mean division.